going on? This is Echo. Welcome to the Echo is the Name podcast, episode one. I told people on social media that if I hypothetically did a podcast, where should I start? Considering there's a lot of people that have been following me on social media over the years and digging the insights that I kick on Twitter and share on Instagram. A lot of people said I should start with my awakening. How did that start? When did that start? How did I kind of wake up, so to speak, Come become aware? So um, let's start there. I was a nerd in high school. I went to LaGuardia, and I was a nerd. I was into Dungeons and Dragons, comic books, reading classes, uh, everything, English class, whatever it was. I was soaking it up. I was a nerd. And uh, I'd say about my sophomore, junior year, I don't remember really when, but sophomore, junior year of high school, I found out my father had a whole other family he was living with my whole life. What fucked me up even more is the fact that I've also found out that my half-brother was born on the same day, the same year that I was born. So he and I share a birthday. We know each other. We've met. Apparently there were other half-siblings as well. I've met all of them. Um, It's all love. I mean, I don't blame them, obviously. But, you know, that was the first time in my life that I really got shattered. And I had to kind of rebuild myself. And soon after that, I started hustling. Smoking weed, He's in the, I was in the streets, it was, you know, I was rebelling against life because life fucked me up for a minute. So I'd say about one, maybe one or two years later, one night I was on the block smoking and drinking, and my mom told me that she needed me to take my Aunt Teresita to 175th Street, about two stops away on the A train from where I lived at. Um, so I was like, yeah, of course. Um, I think she was visiting a friend that was... Uh, Staying at 175th, that a seat that was staying with me and my family, me and my mom's and my sister Judy. I think she had a visa at the time, so she was staying with us in the Heights. So I jumped on the train, took that a seat that 175th, had some alcohol with me. I forgot where I stashed it on me and some weed. We got to 175th, took her upstairs, made sure she got out the exit okay, came back downstairs on the other side of the platform, and waited for my train to take me back to 190 train gets there I get on the train and it's uh kind of delayed doors open so I just sit at the window seat and uh, start sipping a little alcohol I think I had Sambuca that was my that was my booze of choice at the time don't ask me why it's a syrup and I started playing this little radio I had on me I always carried it with me I guess I was playing it too loud because all of a sudden I hear cops walkie-talkie on the platform off in the distance so I lower the music a little bit and I uh, put the stash between me and the seat. Put the booze between me and the seat, too. A few seconds later, a B cop walks into the train car. He starts walking towards me. Was that you playing the music, he says. Of course, I say no, because I'm young and stupid. So he's like, yo, get up. I say no. We go at it back and forth a few times. Get up. No, I won't get up. I finally get up, and the alcohol like kind of rolls into the seat, into the middle of the seat. He looks at me. And, um, you know, he's super mad. He feels disrespected, I guess. I don't know. He's like, show me your ID. Back then, I didn't really carry it when I was just hustling in the streets and running around or whatever, so I didn't have it on me. He said, what's your name? I wouldn't tell him. And I started to just name names. He could tell I was lying. He's like, oh, you're a wise guy. Let's see how funny you are. Train takes off. And the train stops would have been like 175th from where I was at uh, at that time to 181st to 190, my stop. He says, we're going to the last stop, Dykeman. So we end up at Dykeman a few minutes later. He's just standing on the platform. I'm against the door. And uh, he handcuffs me after we get off. To, he puts me up against the turnstile wall where there's like a gate. And he says, all right, let's see if everybody thinks you're funny now. Walks away a little bit to start writing me a ticket, I guess, or whatever. And all the passengers are getting off the train, and they're all staring at me. I'm handcuffed to this wall. I hadn't really been messed with by cops up until this point, so I was kind of starting to freak out. He was basically shaming me. So he says, we're going to call your mother and see if she says you are who you say you are. You're going to tell me who you are. And she vouches for you, whatever. I, I won't take you to jail. So he makes me tell my mother, who speaks broken English, as it is. So she's fucking terrified when this cop calls and says he has her son cuffed to a train station wall. And that I was drinking and that he found weed. 
that I was lying about my name and I was going to go to jail. And I could hear my mother screaming and crying in the background. Edwin, dile que eres tú, Edwin, Edwin. So he's like, yeah, is that you? And I was like, yes, 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 that's me, that's me, that's me. And he tells my mom, I'll be home soon, whatever, hangs up, turns around and punches me in the stomach. Knocks the wind out of me. So I collapse. I'm still handcuffed. He uncuffs me and he says, never lie to the cops again. And he bounces. He just disappeared. I don't even know which way he went. He just left. That is also where my awakening began. Soon after that night, I started researching policemen. What about those positions of power they're in? Make them abusive. Why would anybody really want to even be a cop? I started researching, digging, looking into stuff. Using my old knowledge and ways to like find information when I wanted to play video games or when I was rocking board games and role playing games. So I started to discover police academies and agencies that how they profile databases to find people with certain psychological profiles for recruitment, how they dig in certain um, educational systems and um, you know foster care systems and all kind of stuff. Um, also, what the designing is behind how cops go into certain neighborhoods, the whole the whole ball of wax. Just everything about cops, I was trying to learn about them. Even the early slave days of them when they were slave patrols. That's what they originally were, KKK, all cops back in the day. That's where it started. Cops, they come from that. This was getting me crazy because as I was researching all this shit, I could feel the energies inside me of like unlocking stuff and discovering stuff. And it was like going through my whole body. I mean, people always ask me, like, yo, what book did it and what person was it or whatever. And I'm like, look, if you genuinely seek information, it finds you. You don't have to do a lot of work. Once you start genuinely from a soul place, looking for something, searching for something, to the point where you're willing to sacrifice whatever for it to find it out, it'll find you. All of a sudden, me walking into bookstores, books were falling off shelves for me. Certain books. Random people would walk up to me in random places to tell me about experiences they had or books they thought I might be interested in or um, a get-together at some cafe or something that was going on with people of like minds. It was weird. It was good. And I just started going deeper and deeper. When all this was happening, I started to dig, like dig into the cops still and find out about why certain federal organizations want people to like dress alike and look alike and wear the same stuff and the mentality of people that want to do stuff like that like you know cops judges firemen like it's just like it, it started to all kind of be weird to me how reality was unfolding again kind of like when i was taking acid back in the day but this was on a metaphysical level i started looking into judges the judicial system the robes they wear why they wear them uh, the branches of government, how one makes laws, one is supposed to interpret law and one enforces law. I was like, how weird. What a weird setup. I wonder who thought of that, who came up with that. How long has this been going on and who started it to begin with and what year was it started in? And why does this area of history say it's these people? And why does this area of history and this curriculum say it's these people? The awakening just started to unfold more and more. That It all led me to more research on different ways to unlock certain parts of myself so that I can actually access deeper parts of information that are in the universe, absorbing things like the Akashic records, um, being able to feel the ether, being able to see things I was seeing when I was tripping out on certain substances, but just being able to do stuff like that, walking around like a switch, clicking it on and off. It's how I diffuse situations that I'm having with other people or within myself. It sounds weird to say awakening because it sounds like you've been asleep for all your life up until that time, but I felt I was always awake. I just really, really started to open my eyes wider and wider. I hope that lets you in a little bit on who I am. Again, my name is Echo. Comment. I'm Echo is the name on any social media look up, so I look forward to hearing from you soon. Let me know what you think.